Welcome to Craft Life, the show that takes a look at the mind of crafters and artists to find out what is their inspiration, why do they do what they do, and impart with us a little project that we can do at home. I started getting into crafts and art at an early age. My dad is a comic book writer and my aunt is an art teacher. So I started at a young age drawing and coloring and painting. So all through like grade school and high school and college, I just took a lot of art classes. And then my mom has always been sewing since she was in high school. So I picked up sewing from her, which I recently have been using in my arts and crafts. One thing that really made an impact on me as a child was my aunt taught me how to collage. So it was like you could take the magazines and the newspapers that you don't use anymore and just cut them up and make something new. So I always loved doing that. And when I was a, like a teenager, I would get all the girl magazines and cut those up and make all that kind of stuff. And then it just kind of evolved as I got older. So I guess that's like the first major thing I can think of. Um, I went to college for sculpture, but I, uh, I focused in painting and sculpture. And then um, the sculpture professor retired. So then they kind of lumped us in different places and I got kind of stuck in the fibers area, which I didn't like at first, but um, now I really like to sew and quilt and I recycle a lot of stuff. So I kind of, don't just make regular sewing things, I make more, I don't know, artistic kind of things. So I sew and I paint and I just started doing those pour paintings that everybody's doing now, which like anybody can do, but it's fun. Um, I also, I got a button maker like two years ago. Like that's not that creative, but it's so much fun to make buttons and magnets. And then I also, like have been using t-shirts to upcycle jean jackets. So I'll go thrifting and buy all these jean jackets and then kind of either punk them out or make them fun and use like old t-shirts and fabric and just kind of make them cool without bedazzling them per se, <laughs> but in a fun sort of way. Um, also, I don't know, I can look around my room. There's a little bit of everything. Sewing, painting, drawing, yeah, lots of stuff. I have an Etsy shop that I upload stuff to, but also I have been doing these art slash craft nights where they'll have it like in the Fox Valley area and then you can go and set up a booth and sell your art. So I have been doing that for the past two years, but I've been trying to up my game this year and I applied for a bunch of different craft shows and art shows and like art in the park and on the island and all that. So. I've been slowly starting to do that and I just made my own website so I can sell through that too. So there's like a bunch of different ways to sell it. It is like therapy. It, it just, I need to focus on something and I, I need to like create and have a creative outlet. So it's always been art and it's one way or another. So I don't necessarily always just choose one thing but I like to switch it up. Like I'll paint one day, then sew another day. And it like some of my art has emotion into it. So it's like, however the day goes, you can kind of put all your energy into that project. So then it just feels a little bit better. I feel like I've made something. I feel like I've accomplished something. I didn't just sit and watch TV all day or play video games. Like even if I don't sell stuff right away, I feel like, okay, I just made a product that I really like that reflects somewhat of me. Oh so, yeah. So it helps, it helps me too. It keeps me sane. and keeps me from doing, I don't know, just bad, boring things, I guess. <laughs> keeps me focused. I have a six-year-old right now, and just as soon as he was old enough, we would give him a pencil and pens and draw, and he would watch me draw, and we would do it together. So I've kind of like inspired him. So now that he's in kindergarten, he draws all the time. 
he does art projects. Like I'm pretty sure when he goes to school and has art class, he tells his art teacher like, oh, I've done that at home before. So we do all these things that I just try to do with him to keep him busy and to keep him you know, off of video games and the iPad all the time and just to get his brain going and thinking. And it's just what I grew up with, so I'm just used to it. So I just keep it going with him and he just keeps the creativity going too. And he does kind of inspire me because as an adult, you get all these like limitations and expectations about your art and kids are just so carefree. They don't care. Like he'll work really hard on something that scribble all over it and just whatever, you know, he's not bothered. So it's just fun because we, we help each other be more creative. So I take all these little fabric scraps that I have left over and I will sew them all together into like a bigger chunk of fabric. And you can back it to keep it held together. Um, so then I just keep going. Sometimes they call them like crumb blocks because you're making like a block out of all these fabric crumbs. And then I'll make like a bigger one that's the size of a hoop. And this one that I've been working on has many different fabric scraps. And then I will put some batting in between the top layer and the bottom layer and then start quilting it. Or I could do straight lines or I could do free motion quilting. I can trace things, pretty much do whatever I want with it. I, I like to add little salvages from fabrics or patches like Girl Scout and Boy Scout patches. And then they fit into this hoop and then I can back them and then they end up a finished product like that. And then it, it's really nice in these because then you can hang it from this little screw up there. So you don't have to specifically mount it anyway. I have a nice new sewing machine so I don't have like the foot pedal anymore. So it's just a press, stop and go, which is kind of nice. It's kind of hard to get used to sometimes. But like I was working on this project for a while and it's a lot of straight lines kind of playing against the different kinds of patterns and fabrics that I've used. I've been keeping the colors of the thread to yellow, red, and orange to stick with the theme colors on this. Flip the feed dogs. So I moved the feed dogs down so that when it was up, it pulls your fabric through to get those straight lines. When the feed dogs are down, you're able to move it any way you want. Gloves are for quilting and it gives you a better grip so your hands don't slip if you get sweaty palms when you're doing it. So now like the fabric isn't stuck in there, you can move it however. So this helps me hold it and then I'll just kind of move it as you go. This, it does take a little bit of practice because you want to, um, if you move it too quickly, you're gonna have like bigger stitches. And if you move it slower, you're gonna have the, the stitches that are close to each other. just outline and then sometimes I like to make art quilts too we're just using the fabric scrap more just a unique pattern to stitch I wouldn't say I'm very skilled at it um, but it gives it a little bit of a different feel than just the straight lines. It's not so geometric, it's more you can go up organic with your shapes and, and fun, give it just not such a restrictive feel, I guess. And I like that like I'm using yellow thread over black so that it pops because if you're looking usually at quilts from farther away, you can't really see all the hard work people put into the stitching. You see the fabric and the design, but you don't necessarily see all the work that's put into it. Again, I'm not doing the best here, but I'm okay. I'm just kind of playing and going free motion and just seeing what you can do. So these are the little hoops that you can use. I loosen up the screws. Then I'm gonna place this on top of the inside hoop. 
and I cut it just like to be the perfect size. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight. Put it on the frame. I'm gonna tighten that and I'm gonna tug at the edges just a little bit to make sure that it's not loose in there because I'm gonna end up I found the best thing to do is to, even though I don't like hot glue, to hot glue it onto it so that if for some reason the hoop were to come off, it would still be mounted. So I got my hot glue going. Like I said, I'm not really a big hot glue fan, but this seems to work the best. So I'll put hot glue around the frame. And then when I got that pretty much all good, I cut out a piece of black felt. And I just kind of stretch it as I go. And this is a way where I can still, like if, if I use the labels with my name, I still have my signature or at least my mark on it somewhere. I don't necessarily want it on the front like how some people do it on paintings but it's still there, even if it's on the back. Yep. So I try to just recycle in everything that I do. So honestly, it's, yeah, total cost, probably five to $10, but with a couple hours worth of work into it. Yeah. Right, well, you, got, you have to think of the cost that goes into purchasing the supplies and then your time and energy spent into it. And then for me, I went to school for art so then you kind of want to put that into it because you paid to get these ta to get the talent and to get the know-how yeah so i mean i would charge probably when i have my art show these little ones will be about 15 to 20 dollars and the bigger ones will be probably 30 to 35 dollars I currently work in real estate as an administrative assistant and also as an agent. So um, basically I do back-end paperwork for real estate sales and I go out and show homes and, you know, help people buy and sell. What more do you do? Um, as far as crafts, I kind of just pick up crafts wherever I find them. Um, I'll go to like Dollar Tree and Walmart and places like that. and just pick up random things that look cool and just kind of do things with them. Um, a lot of social media, you'll find things to do there. And I think Pinterest is a huge one where you just find, it's just a gold mine of miscellaneous crafts to do. And it's where I find a lot of the things I do, like um, crocheting little granny squares into pixel art and then um, making new cool patterns and things like that. As well as, if, like recently we did the melted crayons, and that was pretty cool. It hurts and burns when you get it on your skin, but it looks really great. Sometimes I'll sell it. I know for a while we were selling some of the things that we made, but overall it's just a creative outlet. It's just a hobby. Um, if I can find someone who wants to buy it, great, buy it. That's by all means. <laughs> That's nice. But um, other than that, it's just for me, for my own expressive things um well when i'm crafting i definitely feel more relaxed i feel like it's just one task at hand you get a lot of focus and it just keeps all of the white noise in my mind out it just blocks it all out and i just feel much more calm and relaxed i want to say i once a month now but definitely like to do more just as time allows i guess um, my crafting can get a little expensive depending on the craft. Um, I feel like mostly the fabric crafts are where it gets a little more pricey just because the fabric itself tends to be more pricey, but otherwise it, it's pretty moderately priced. Not too bad. Okay, so for making this awesome little monster puppet, which I've adorned with a mustache, we'll need construction paper, a plastic, or sorry, paper bags, either liquid school glue or a 
glue stick, whichever you prefer. I prefer the glue stick. Scissors, um, googly eyes, or you can just use construction paper and cut eyes out and a crayon or a marker or something to embellish it. And then you get this cool guy. Okay, so you wanna pick out your colors and we're gonna use green, red, white, and yellow for our monster puppet. Okay, so for this portion, the red I'm going to use as the inside of the mouth. And I'm just lining it up to the inside of where the mouth is going to be to get my cut lines. So I'll just fold it inside and then fold along the edge. And then I'm just going to cut on the fold. And then that should fit nicely. Inside is the inside of the mouth. Just like that. Yep, just the same as the red inside of the mouth. Except these two, rather than keeping them together, I'm just going to cut them into two separate pieces. I'm gonna also make them a little more jagged so they can look like scary monster teeth. And this kind of craft is nice to have kids involved as well as just adults. I personally like doing it just because it takes me back and makes me feel like a kid again. But you could definitely just do it with a bunch of friends and just have fun with it. It's for everybody. So I'll just line these up, kind of see where they're gonna go. And from there, I just free cut jagged edges, mostly triangular shapes into the pieces to kind of get a tooth-like pattern. You could definitely just trace something out I don't see the need. And then same with the other side. And that'll be our top and our bottom teeth. Probably like that. That looks good. Next portion is going to be the face. I personally like green. And for this, again, just use your bag as a template and just fold where you wanna cut to match up the edges and cut from there. I'm just gonna keep cutting along the lines just like every other piece. And then now I'm going to make some horns. Just fold this in half. Um, you can definitely trace something out. I'll just be making something a little more freehand. Um, just because I don't like to trace things out. will be our two horns. Go right there. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces together, we can start by gluing. Um, just for positioning purposes, it looks like I would put the mouth in first, and then the teeth, the face, and then the horns. Um, you can either use liquid school glue or glue stick. I prefer a glue stick, so I'll be using that. And I'm pretty liberal with the glue. Let's go ahead and spread that around. Place the interior mouth. 
just press down. Make sure it's all stuck. Then the teeth. Do our top portion first. bottom row. Press down and then you've got a little monster mouse. Next would be the face. Again, glue. that bad boy down there press down make sure it's really on there you don't want your monster's face falling off and then time for the horns so I've got two horns I'll probably put them on the edges back here so I'll flip this over and just put some glue on the back corners And place them like so, just like every other piece. Press down, make sure it's stuck. Doesn't matter if they're uneven. It's a scary monster. Makes it look better if it's not. So, there we have the base. And then, next you can actually just cut out eyes for your monster out of construction paper or in my case I found these cool googly eyes and I really like these so I'll probably use one of these and ooh I like these so put these guys on here and tiny little eyes for your big face um, you can also use a crayon or marker or something and just kind of embellish maybe make some nostrils or anything else that you might want to put on there mustache angry eyebrows anything and then that's pretty much it you're ready to go and then you can have your angry monster And some words of encouragement for inspiring artists out there. Like, it helps to, I mean, if you don't know where you want to go in your art or craft career, it's, to me, it's awesome to experiment and just to see where it takes you. And it's good to watch videos and to see what other people do and kind of take from there. Uh, don't have so much expectations on your art it's good to talk with other people and get their opinions and definitely I would say one thing is take critiques with a grain of salt and and use it to your advantage like don't get frustrated if somebody doesn't like your work that's just one person everybody's different and for even for me I'm not sure what like my, my specific niche or style is and I keep evolving and taking from what other people tell me so I just would say don't give up and don't get stuck or pigeonholed in one sort of thing. There's just, there's so much out there that you can do. Like, don't just, yeah. <laughs> so for new crafters, I would definitely say just find something, pick something up, and if you like it, just do it. Why not? You have a little spare time, just find the time, do it. it never hurts. If it doesn't come out right the first time, yeah, just keep doing it. Find something new. Whatever works for you, you know, it took a while for me, so um, I know it might take someone a lot of different tries, like it did for me, um, and you eventually find something and you, you really stick to it and then from there it kind of grows out more, but it's definitely a process.
So just keep trying. Thanks for watching Craft Life. May your life get a little craftier. Thank you.